Can you see it? It's snowstorm number 11. Let's see, how can we make you see it? Oh, there it is. Wanted you just to see how well we did in getting rid of snowstorm number 10. It was almost gone. And we better get inside. I don't think the Sony camera likes this so much. And I found out that the birdies like macaroni. Well, why wouldn't they? It's wheat. And what do you think, dot com? And what is going on here? Yes, it is. It took 12 hours to put the titles. I'm going to chat with Glendora, but may not be. and there are 12 editions, because and today we're making nine dubs of each of the 12 editions. And thank you, LC Rocket, for fighting the crooks in the Nassau County Courts, the crooked judges, the crooked lawyers, and the crooked clerks. Thank you, LC Rocket, Massapequa. Look what's going on here. First of all, we got the kitty cat who's having a nap. And over here, we have a chat with Glendora. And this is program number seven, I guess. This one is program number eight, the dubs for that. And this is how many have been done. So we're on a fun trip, folks. Seven editions. And what's the final result? And it's just one videotape left. Achievement, achievement, satisfaction, enjoyment. So, rest, peace, we will have to start exhilaration, exuberance. subtracting editions from here and there of the first eight editions. We have to keep a list of what is the topic is for each program so that it goes to the right uh, town. That it goes to Peekskill if it's supposed to go to Peekskill. That it goes to Seymour if it's supposed to go to Seymour. That it goes to Connecticut if it's supposed to. And then, it's a very busy job because you have to unwrap these tapes and you have to label every tape I can give you the address. By the number. And then you have to keep the internet index so that people who go to the internet can find out the topic that they want to uh, screen, view. Very, very busy. And every 15 minutes, we have to rejoice. And we rejoice about you because you're the ones that we do this for. And we will not be going to the Ghent Post Office today. This is an in day. This is a snowed in day. Snow number 11. They're done. They're done. The editing is done. Eight dubs of each edition. And the titling took 12 hours yesterday. And the editing making the dubs of each edition took nine hours. Valiant work, you machines. Valiant work, you electrons. Rest now for what, two, three weeks? Five, four, five, E, E, A, S, T, New York, one, four, zero, I like your program and I think you're really pretty special. Thank you. Bye bye. We wrapped 73 tapes. 73 tapes. And you see those over there in the box that aren't wrapped? Here. You know, I have no place to put my feet. There's ten tapes. 
What are we going to do with those nice programs and all that good information? We don't have TV stations for them. And I think it's taken seven hours so far. This is the internet. Here's one that's even longer. Oh, look how long that is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is the postage at the new rate. Whee! What a long receipt. And if that isn't enough, here's another one. This is a new postage rate. And you remember, folks, that a chat with Glendora, public access, is all voluntary. It all comes out of the personal money of the public access producer. No money is allowed to be earned in public access. This is all voluntary. I would say it costs about, I can't tell you without sitting down and figuring it out. I think that postage costs about $80 a couple of times a month, and videotapes cost about $50 a couple of times a month. So what's that, 180 260 260 a month. And you multiply that by 12 months, that's about, that's about $3,000 a year. I love a sunset, don't you folks? Here it is, Groundhog Day. Not bad, is it? The winter's been pretty friendly. Here's the new hat that Bonnie Sutherland bought me. Isn't it nice? I said, may I have a receipt? And she said, no. Well, that means she gave it to me as a gift. See, the sun will be setting farther and farther north. The last six weeks of winter. Everybody liked the kids' jokes that I told you. 42 degrees, folks. And raining. So that will be it. That will be the end of snowstorm 11. Six more weeks of winter. Bonnie Sutherland bought us a new hat. Isn't that sweet? She saw it, she bought it, she brought it home. And I said, where's the receipt? And she says, uh-uh. She wouldn't let me pay for it. And see the south lawn. It's almost clear. Oh. Snow. And see the new car, a 2006. Laughter from the Bronx. Okay. No, no, I know this. But I said you know, USP, United States Postal Service. USPS, okay. Right, USPS. Right. right. Did you know that UPS uh, and uh, Federal Express are going to merge and they're going to call it the Fed Up? <laughs>
And the teacher says, well, supposing Jonah goes to hell. And the little girl says, you ask him. <laughs> I like that. Hey, I got it right. I'll talk. This is Omnibus 27 lawsuit, and it's in the United States District Court, District of Idaho. These are the James Reynolds defendants, Mid-Hudson Cablevision, Rob Johnson, Lori Palver, Stuart Smith, and Mid-Hudson Media. And what do you have to say about it, dot com? Well, well, that's good, dot com. Well, these defendants and their arrogance and their ignorance uh, keep refusing legal papers. That's about the dumbest thing you can do. And they are fugitives. Refused. Here's another one they refused. Refused. These both came in to me Groundhog Day. So, to the United States District Court, District of Idaho, Glendora Plaintiff versus Stephen G. Taman et al. Defendants, Glendora, affirmation in further support of her motion that James Reynolds' defendants be instantly convicted of judgment by default as the Four of them continue their ignorant and arrogant fugitivism from this court. This is Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 55. Indeed, they are in double default because what they refused was my motion for default judgment against them and other defendants. Under penalty of perjury, Glendora asseverates that she has told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help her God. And on February 2nd, Groundhog Day, 2006, Glendora received the within refusal by Reynolds of her motion for default judgment against him. Thereby, Reynolds is in double default. Reynolds' defendants do not deserve the solicitude of this court. Glendora served the affirmation, this affirmation, uh, on the Reynolds defendants, and Reynolds also refused another mailing from Glendora, also received uh, on Groundhog's Day. The original goes to the clerk of the court in Idaho and we send a courtesy copy to the United States District Judge. And we put three copies into Hudasu, the next omnibus lawsuit, omnibus 28, because I think we're going to sue the Reynolds defendants again for violations of public access rights. So what do we do? We have to serve a copy on Reynolds. And so what do we do? We take a 9 by 12 envelope and we tell the world the whole story. And we say legal paper, motion for default judgment on the James Reynolds defendants. And then we put the motion on the outside of the paper. And everybody can read it on the postal trail. So there are only uh, four legal papers this week. And uh, wouldn't isn't this amazing? Gondor versus Cecilia Masterilli. And they still can't uh, spell the right name. This is Salako. And this is a notice of appeal. Please take notice that defendant Cecilia Masterilli hereby appeals to the Supreme Court of the State of New York appellate term, second department, from each and every part of the order, the Honorable Eric Press, dated December 5, 2005, duly entered and filed 
in the office of the clerk of the city court of White Plains on December 14, 2005. Now, an unsound signature and uh, a Park Avenue attorney. Uh, Cablevision loses on a $5,000 judgment, uh, makes a motion to vacate the judgment. What did that cost? And then fails on that motion and then comes limping back with a second motion to vacate and they lose on that one and this is the one they're appealing. Now what's this whole appeal going to cost? What would you say? Three times? Five thousand dollars? And what do you say? That Charles Dolan, James Dolan, Cablevision, and all the hoods he hires to lie for him are uh, guilty of fiduciary responsibility. Does that make any sense? Just pay it. Why pay fifteen thousand dollars fighting it? Now you White Plain City Court, if this was uh, written on uh, December 5th, this order, why did it take you, or rather, yeah, December 5th, why did it take you until December 14th to enter it? We could have got these people on uh, untimely appeal. This is the uh, one of the other legal papers. This is Glendora's appellant's brief to the Supreme Court, uh, State of New York, Second Department appellate term on uh, Glendora versus Charles Dolan, Cablevision, James Dolan, Mac Bedil, Thomas Garga, Christine Saverino, Charles Former, Cecilia Masterilli, and uh, Patty Lan and Langelotti about keeping my program off of TV in Harrison. And that's very, very well on its way. I have until uh, April to perfect it. And up here in this drawer is great, great, great big Herculean Omnibus 28, which is moving along rapidly too. You know, just working uh, an hour a day on something, it gets done. The uh, Kindergarten teacher was walking around the classroom looking at uh, the children's drawings and she said to one little girl, what are you drawing? And the little girl says, I'm drawing God. And the teacher says, people don't know what God looks like. And the little girl, without taking her eyes off of her desk and without a bit of hesitation said, they will now. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is the health and salvation. All ye who hear, to His temple draw near. Join us in glad adoration.
great. And like Jesus, we need from time to time to take a moment to be alone in the restorative presence of our Heavenly Father. In His presence.
receive this offering as a sign of our gratitude, but more so, accept the gift of our lives as we live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, this is a Martin Van Buren church. The President of the United States, Martin Van Buren, who came from Kinderhook, New York, worshipped here every Sunday. And he was a vice president for Andrew Jackson. And Andrew Jackson got rid of the Central Bank of America, which was robbing the people, bleeding them, the international bankers. And I wish that we could now get rid of the Federal Reserve System, which should be called 
the third or fourth central bank of the United States, which continues to rot and bleed. A belly shot. You're looking for it, aren't you? You're trying to find it. You've look, been looking for it for years. You can't find it in the stores. You can't find it when you're driving the car. You can't find it in the Super Bowl. You go to church and you can't find it. You can't find it anywhere, can you? You want it so badly. You want it so badly. What you have to do? What Christ did? Get up in the morning before dark and go alone and pray. Well, at least, sometime, the first thing when you get up in the morning, go alone and touch your oneness with God. That's what you're looking for. I have the secret. I have the secret. And I'll tell you about it. You stay tuned to a chat with Glendora and I'll give you that secret. You're going to have everything you want in life. Here he is, the 1980 Lincoln, and we're dressed to light today. We're both maroon. 378,000 miles. 25 years old, a classic. And now DCTV, public access for the District of Columbia, our nation's capital. Let's you and I have a little talk together. Here you are, blessed with one of the greatest missions in the United States of America, the public's access to TV. And here you are, and you get your ego in front of it. You don't care about America. You don't care about the public. You don't care about the people's right to know. You don't care about the Constitution. You don't care about the First Amendment. All you want to do is show people how powerful you are, and you mess up the whole thing. You ruin it from beginning to end, and you have for three years. And you think that's great. You're not getting any personal satisfaction in your lives, so you get your personal satisfaction through your arrogance and your ignorance. A chat with Glendora has a very important message for your people in the District of Columbia. They need to hear about happiness. They need jokes. They need to know the truth about the government. They need to know that there is no justice in the courts, that the courts in the District of Columbia are totally barren. And who has made them that way? The international bankers. And all of those people in the District of Columbia are just puppets to the international bankers. A chat with Glendora has a very important message, and you have made fools of yourselves trying to keep that message away from the public. With all your frivolous and with all your trivial excuses, all manufactured, all phony, all artificial. Come on, DCTV. Go alone with God and find out where it really is and find out the thing in life that you're really looking for. Remember, you have a great calling, and you have messed it up. It's time to admit it. It's time to apologize for it. It's time to atone for it, and it's time to reform. in Connecticut, going to Manchester, Connecticut. And uh, Mr. Whitney, Edward L. Whitney, and uh, Mr. Arnold Engen, Arnie Engen,
were in another car, and uh, I don't know whether they were behind or in front of them, but they were together. And a man uh, was in the right lane, and then he decided to make a left-hand turn, and Albert plowed into the rear end of that man's car, and that man made the man's car make a 360-degree turn, and the man's car came up and hit Albert's driver's door. And that was, thank you, God, for sparing Albert Lebrun. Uh, they were going to Manchester, Connecticut to uh, see about leased access TV. You know what leased access is? Leased access you pay for. And they found out that the price is from anywhere from $50 to $150 a half hour. And I'm interested in that, Lori Batanani, because you have been so nasty. Uh, you have been so violative of public access and the public's right to access to TV. So I'm interested in that. And I think we'll buy some half hours until you're not there anymore. Uh, I would like to tell you what I told Albert Lebrun. Uh, he was by a ring that operates in the court, judges, lawyers, clerks, police, sheriffs, uh, by this ring that operates in the courts, and I guess it's in many states, it's certainly in New York, and it's certainly in Connecticut, because I've known personally victims of this, and Albert Lebrun is a victim of that. And he got a judgment against his home for $100,000, that beautiful home that he designed, far above many homes. And he got 90000 judgment against it, uh, his place of business. I've told you the story and videotaped it. Anyway, Mr. Lebrun that got a notice that he was in default. And uh, what's wrong with this notice that he's in default? I'll tell you what's wrong. There's a word in the English language that means a judge. And it means to decide, to determine, to pronounce judicially. Judicially. What's wrong with that default notice? It was not decided, determined, and pronounced judicially. And so Glendora read in these definitions, Mr. Lebrun comes from Canada, and he's, his language is Francais. Uh, and the word adjudicate means to hear judicially, to try judicially, and to determine judicially, and to settle by judicial degree. A clerk is not a judge. And the kinetic courts go one step farther toward the crooked end. They have a temporary clerk sign it, so that when you go there to check it out, the temporary clerk is gone. So I taught Mr. Lebrun that, and he was inspired, and now he has the answer to the court. I haven't been served with an order. Again, the paper that you give me is a nullity. Again, it's bogus. I am glad that the Lord spared Mr. Albert Lebrun of Stafford Springs, Connecticut and of South Windsor, Connecticut. We have a copy of Penny's new catalog and we ordered purple pants from it. A pair for Mary Ramage in Yorktown, Mohegan Lake, Cablevision, Yorktown. She's my signer there, and we, we've had wonderful times over the years. And I ordered a pair for her and a pair for moi. And they haven't come yet. And it was way, way, way back. At least three weeks ago. Do you want my pennies catalog? You can have it if you like it. My dear people whom I love very much, here is Americans for Legal Reform. Julie Gambino, Carol Ancesera, and Harvey Cash. And this is their quarterly bulletin, and these are their meetings. Now this is, anybody can go, but this is Nassau County and Suffolk County, Long Island. And this is where it is at the Plain View Old Bethpage Library. 
And then they go out and they pick at the lawyers and they pick at the dirty judges in the Suffolk Supreme Court and the Nassau County Supreme Court. So many people have been uh, ripped off and abused by judges and by lawyers and by clerks and by police and by sheriffs. So many, many, many people. And they are looking for information on the following names. Let me show those to you. Have any information on those people? Would you please call Americans for Legal Reform? You want their number? Yeah, I guess so. We just ask you to call. Them. Let's find it. Here's their website. Let's say they have over 100 links. That's quite a chain. Now oh, let me find their number somewhere. Carl Lance and Sarah, Julie Gambino, and Harvey Cash. And they really came head to head with a lawyers association in Suffolk County. And Suffolk Bar, President A. Greg Purcell made a fool of himself when he attempted to put us out of business. He had to commit perjury by setting, submitting two conflicting affidavits in court. Grace Moran, moron, moron, past Nassau Bar President, did several TV shows with cash in which he showed the audience. She was. And they give. And Carl was sued for libel up in Syracuse, New York, of all places. And that was a farce. And I don't know how it ended up other than that the lawyers were ordered to pay Carl three dollars. But where is their telephone number? Well, call Julie Gambino, 516-694-9474. That's in Farmingdale, or Farmingville, or Farmington, whatever it is out there. Julie Gambino, 516-694-9474. And they fight lawyers. And they fight hard. And Carl and Harvey were the ones whom court officer uh, Anthony Longo, president of the court officers union, and he is a lawyer, uh, tried to have Carl and Harvey arrested for telling lawyer jokes. Now Google has 23,000 stories publicizing his Dementia. Syracuse lawyers Hoffman and Hubert have sued Carl for millions because he inferred they were crooks. And Judge Edward Carney had to commit jury tampering with his friend Judge Nicholson to get themselves out of it. That was really funny that he should, uh, that they should try to pull it over on him in Syracuse on the slander or libel, I've forgotten which one it was. Slander is, is spoken and libel is written. And it's really funny that they tried to have him arrested for telling liar jokes as they stood in line outside the Hempstead Courthouse. It's really funny. It's a good thing, best thing that ever happened. Because they showed you what fools liars are. 
Now I want to tell you something about lawyers. And I want you to remember this, that a lawyer does not have a state license. Would you go to a medical doctor who wasn't licensed by your state? Then why do you go to a lawyer who isn't licensed by your state? A lawyer has no license by the people of the state of New York or any other state. All they have is a union card. A union card from one of the worst unions we have, the American Bar Association. Remember, a lawyer is not licensed by the state. A lawyer has no license. What else was there to speak to you about? The secret that I have for you. Someday I'll tell you the secret. I have the secret how you can have L the money that you want, how you can have all of the prestige you want, all of the applause, all of the appreciation, all of the love, all of the strength, all of the happiness, all of the joy. I have the secret as to how you can be the 100% person that you would like to be. I have the secret of how you can run and operate, not at 50% of what you are, but at 100% of what you are. I watch the people in church. I sit in the balcony and I look down. And I see them, and those people have come in, coming to that church year after year after year, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And I talk to them before church, and I talk to them after the church. They don't know the secret. They don't know the secret. But the sermon this morning was the secret. And I'll tell you, I'll just give you a clue. I'll just give you a clue. Let me find the church bulletin. Time out. Are you ready? Mark this down in your head. Pun intended. Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, the 29th verse. Can you remember that? Remember you just saw the Mark 6? The 1980 Lincoln Continental Mark 6? Mark, first chapter, 29. Verse 29. That's your clue. Let's see if you can find it. Let's see if you can dig and find the secret. To everything you want. All of the money, all of the prestige, all of the wealth. The big house that you want, the big car that you want. Respected, praised, applauded, admired, cheered. History, politics, and the world. That's your first clue. Let's see if you're smart enough to find the secret. The people in church are sort of like pew potatoes. You know, your couch potatoes, they're sort of like pew potatoes. They come every Sunday and they listen. Or do something. You heard about one man who was very active in church? He squirmed and fidgeted the whole service through. But they don't get the secret. I want them to get the secret. Pray, 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 pray for them. That they be one with God. Folks, the CD is out of batteries. I'm not. So the CD can't sing you the hymn. So I'll sing it to you. This is a beautiful hymn. And I mean it with everything I have in my heart for you. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing. Triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this universe. What a wonderful trip through this universe. What a grand and glorious trip it is through this universe. Chokes!
the teacher was trying to explain how the blood circulates. And she said, children, if I were to stand on my head, you would see my face would get very, very red. All the blood would rush to my head. Now I'm standing talking to you on my feet. You do not see the blood rushing to my feet. Why is that? And a student says, your feet ain't empty. The teacher was trying to get the class to buy copies of the class photo. She said, children, think how wonderful it would be when you grow up. You're going to look at the photo and you say, there's Jennifer. She grew up to be a doctor. There's Paul. He grew up to be a lawyer. Just think how wonderful that will be. And a little voice in the back says, and there's teacher. She's dead. The little girl was washing her mummy at the sink and noticed that there were a few white hairs in the brunette head. And... She said, Mommy, what makes those white hairs? And Mommy said, anytime you do anything that hurts me and makes me unhappy, I get a white hair. And the little girl thought and thought. And then she says, Mommy, how come Grandma's hair is all white? About the commandments about honor thy father and thy mother, the teacher was telling the children. Do we have a commandment that tells us what to do about our brothers and sisters? And said the oldest of the family, yeah, thou shalt not kill. A little girl was doing her drawing on her desk, kindergartner. And the kindergarten teacher's going around to all the desks and looking at the children's drawings. And she said to one little girl, what are you drawing? And the little girl says, I'm drawing God. The teacher says, well, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl, without taking her eyes off of her paper or her finger off of the paper, said, they will in a minute. Now, in the cafeteria, there was a big platter of apples, and the teacher put a sign on it. Take only one apple. God is watching. Farther down the cafeteria line were chocolate chip cookies, a big platter, and a little girl put a sign on that, and it said, take as many as you want. God is watching the apples. The teacher told the little girl, I know the whale is a large mammal, but the throat of a whale is not large enough to swallow a human being. And the little girl says, but Jonah said he was swallowed by a whale. And the teacher who had atheistic tendencies said, I'm telling you, the throat of a whale is not large enough to swallow a human being. And the little girl says, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah. And the, little, the teacher said, well, supposing Jonah went to hell? And the little girl says, then you ask him. And you ordered more than $25, you got the $7.80 shipping free. That's a lot of money, $7.80 shipping, folks. Things didn't used to be like that. I told you when I was a little girl, we used to send a letter for three cents. And I, I saved the stamps, they were purple, and had Abraham Lincoln on it. A salesman said that he'd been on the road for three months, and somebody who didn't hear him that he was a salesman said, gee, he must be a slow driver. Uh, they make uh, cars that talk, and they make scales that talk. Why don't they make a washing machine that talks and tell you what it did with the other sock? Why did the man qu uh, quit his job at Midas Muffler? He, he was exhausting. And Marilyn says, my son is a plant manager in a big industrial complex. And her friend says, really? Yeah, it's his job to water them every day. Now here's an interesting job. Harry's job is to put the one cashew in a can of mixed nuts. And Edgar started a new business. He manufactures knee pads 
for people who wear contact lenses. And what do you call a veterinarian who specializes in elephant skin disease? Give up? A veterinarian who specializes in elephant skin disease. A pachydermatologist. I think we covered everything up to date, folks. I chat with Glendora's on 51 TV stations, 510 municipalities. And we have problems all over the place. James Correa in Seymour. They make him uh, send a proof of residency. I think that's kind of mean because they're saying that they don't believe him. That he lied on the application, put down the wrong residency. They don't think that's nice, but I'll call up James and see if he'll tolerate them. Uh, pray for the people in public access in the DC TV, public access in the District of Columbia. Pray for all those people. This is the greatest prayer you can say. Pray for them that they'll be one with God. That's the greatest prayer you can say. And they can be. And you can be. And you just have to spend your alone time with God the first thing in the morning. And realize how carefully you were made. And how you were made differently from everybody else. To do a job that only you can do in this beautiful universe. And then to count your pure thoughts all day long and don't have any negative second level or trivial or ugly thoughts. You know, the mind is such a wonderful thing. I was trying to recall the words. Uh, I have a collection of words, uh, 200 and... Is it 43? Well, it doesn't matter. Words. And I was trying to recall the ones from 111 to 150. And at first, nothing would come. But gradually, one word at a time, kept coming back. Now, that's a wonderful thing, a mind. It's a wonderful thing, a mind. How can a mind have a memory like that? How can a mind have a memory like that? That's what the wife said to her husband. Or no, he said to her, a mind is a wonderful thing. And she said, yes, everybody should have one. But God is such a great creator. And then every 15 minutes you rejoice. We, we're rejoicing at 555, which is a magic minute, 555. The biggest magic minute in the whole day is 1111 a.m. or 1111 p.m. Uh, but we were rejoicing about the young man who was reading the Daily Bread, and maybe he made the connection. And then at 6 o'clock, uh, what were we rejoicing about? Okay, what we're doing right now, that the mind is a wonderful thing. She loves my clothes, folks. I was getting ready to hang this up and keep the house a happy house neat and tidy. But I didn't have a chance before she got on them. She just loves to sit on my clothes. And yesterday I was getting dressed up and I wanted to wear that Harlequin vest and that jacket, that maroon corduroy jacket. That's what I wanted to wear to dress up to go to dinner. But, before I could get them on, she went over and sat down on them all afternoon. And I had to wear a 
Well, it matched. It was a maroon sweater with stripes, different color stripes. It matched okay. Folks, I've been fasting until 6 p.m. for weeks now. I don't eat until 6 p.m. for some reason. Now this is a thick shake. Uh, pineapple juice, bananas, oatmeal, and uh, cashews. And this is a vegetarian hamburger with chips, pickles, mustard, uh, sautéed onions and uh, a little bit of cabbage. Then you sauté the hamburger in olive oil. And here we have our kitty eating vegetarian hamburger. She likes a little yeast on it. Now she wants more. She cleaned it all up. I'll give you some more. I listened to his message several times, Eric Cashin, and there's a digit mission. <laughs> there's a digit missing. There's a little bit missing here too. 724087 needs another digit. I'm going to have to get rid of the Verizon voicemail. Guess what? The bill came. I found out that you get charged nine cents for every call that comes in. Isn't that something? It's something about when the call comes into 914-949-9495, it has to be transferred to a, a voicemail. And Verizon charges nine cents for a transfer, just the way they do for a local call. So that's a ripoff, and that's too bad. So goodbye, Verizon. This is Glendora Plant, Harrison Town Court, Westchester County versus Charles F. Dolan, Cablevision Systems Corporation, uh, James L. Dolan, uh, Mac Budil, Thomas Garger, Charles A. Former, Christine Saverino, Cecilia Masterilli, Peggy Anderson, Robert M. Callaghy, Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke, and Angela, no, Patricia Langelotti, Defend. And it is being printed by this trusty little Canon personal copier. And I think this is the next to the last uh, paper that has to be copied in this brief. Over here is what has been copied. Yes. And then I think over here, sleeping, next to sleeping.com, uh, are the minutes. And maybe one other paper written on Memorial Day. And it will be copied. The appellant's brief. The appellant's brief. Uh, Supreme Court, State of New York, Ninth Judicial District. Appellant's brief. Here's the minutes to be copied. We fed the birds some uh, corn kernels. They love them. This is Time Warner in Houston, Texas, and he says, "Send me some tapes, and I'll get them on." Why, well, he's wonderful. Uh, and he called up and gave me the time, 7.30 p.m., 11.30 p.m., and 8.30 p.m. That's pretty good times. Yeah. Well, David, that's good. I uh, hope to meet you someday. Sure, here. I always invite you over to my house for lunch, and we'll have a nice long, long lunch. Okay. Yeah, nice. Actually, I'll take you to our buffet. We have a lovely buffet here. Okay. You got my number and everything?
large mammal, but its throat is not big enough to swallow a human. And the little girl says, well, Jonah said he was swallowed by a whale. And the teacher said, I'm telling you that the throat of a whale is not large enough to swallow a human. The little girl says, well, when I go to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah. And the teacher says, well, supposing Jonah went to hell. And the little girl said, you ask him. <laughs> the school cafeteria, thank you. There was a uh, pot of apples, and the teacher put a sign on it, take only one. God is watching. And down at the end of the cafeteria line was a platter of chocolate chip cookies, and a little girl put a sign on that, and she said, help yourself. Take as many as you want. God is watching the apples. <laughs> You see those beautiful blue strips of sky? That's how blue our sky would be today if it were not for these aerosol clouds. These are the international bankers trying to kill us. That's all poison up there, exuded by jet airplanes. And this is why we don't have any sun day after day after day after day. These are all aerosol clouds. See how nice it could be? Look at that beautiful blue. Go to kernycom.com and find out what's happening. C-A-R-N-I-C-O-M dot com. This is the vegetarian hamburger. This is the mashed potato on top of the hamburger. And this is tomato soup with mixed vegetables in it and a touch of cloves. I made one for you and I made one for me. Now, let's use this food to be our greatest selves and lead others to be their greatest selves. February the 9th, 2006, Anno Domini, Supreme Court, County of Columbia, State of New York, United States of America, Internet. Glendora Plaintiff versus Diane Bennett and Alyssa Ma Amato, defendants. Uh, defendants uh, violated public access law, first come, first serve. Glendora, a chat with Glendora, has been on uh, Cablevision, Nassau County since 1993 at 10 p.m. Fridays. These two defendants dropped it to 4 p.m. Cut Glendora's audience by four-fifths. Violated the law that public access shall be administered on a non-discriminatory basis. Violated the law that no public access shall be limited or prohibited by a cable operator. New York Public Service Law, Article 11, uh, 229C. Violated uh, first come, first serve. And violated forbidden cable operator editorial control. And in addition to that, there's criminal charges against them for running a lottery. A lottery is illegal in the state of New York. This case is 10764, the year 05. Uh, the title of the paper is Plaintiff's Application to the Court to Videotape and Audiotape Her Conference on March 17, 2006 at 2.30 p.m. And Christian F. Hummel is presiding. The relief requested is stated in the title. The return date is the 23rd of February. The location is the courtroom 
of Acting Supreme Court Justice Christian F. Hummel. The grounds are there are that these are the public's courtrooms and the public would find the Hummel Court uh, value Boltono and Glendora wants to televise on her 52 TV stations and further Glendora pleads the court waive the $35 motion fee for this application Glendora is in form of papyrus seven is reserved eight is Glendora served a copy of this application to defendants Bennett and Amato by U.S. First Class Mail on February 9th, 2006. And it's dated the same. State of New York, County Columbia. Yours in truth, and you're in an Armor Patriae and Armor New York guy, Glendora. And this is Opus. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we made this one.
teacher said, uh, I know the whale is a large mammal, but its mouth isn't big enough to swallow a human being. And the little girl says, but Jonah said he was swallowed by a whale. And the little 
And the teacher says, I'm telling you that the mouth of a whale is not large enough to swallow a human being. And the little girl said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. And the teacher says, well, supposing Jonah went to hell? And the little girl says, and you ask him. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. Go on. Hello, Waldo dog. Hello, Waldo dog. Is you here doing your laundry? And your big long coat is being washed, isn't it? Yeah. Waldo dog? Waldo dog. Yeah. Could you go for a walk with him? I think he walks so cute. Yeah, go ahead, just go for a walk with him. It's so cute. I love to see him walk. Hey folks, how you doing? I want to see something interesting. This is the diary. Okay, January, the first week of January. And this is each day you list what comes in and what goes out. And believe me, a whole lot more goes out than comes in. That's the plan of the international bankers. Uh, and then you take each item off of the the sun is so nice you take each item off of this diary or this daily sheet and then you enter it on the month sheet let me sh this is business okay and this one uh, just this one is personal Personal rent, personal electric, gifts, household, groceries. Now over here on the month, you list the in and you put it by column. Then you go to the out. This is for the month of January. Technical equipment, that would be videotapes and a camera, which I hope doesn't have to happen more than once a year. And take a look at the postage. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This is postage for the month of January. What's the total? 189.27? Isn't that outrageous? Wait till you see the end of the year. And office rent and telephone. Newspapers, no. Money order fees are outrageous. Uh, print, office supplies. Hold on, let me get you paid three. So the idea is that you put them, each expense that was on the daily sheet, you put them on the... Uh, Medical expenses for the month of January, $2 for Band-Aids. <laughs> uh, donations receded. That's a long one. What was it for the month of January? $185. Why wouldn't it be plus those? I think it's 
185 plus 95 and personal this is out personal, household telephone, laundry, cleaners, nothing, clothes, electric personal, gifts. Gifts are different from donations receded. And we don't do donations unreceded anymore. Total out personal, 223.50 for January, I guess. Okay, so what have we done? Step one, you keep the diary, and those are the daily entries, in and out. And then at the end of the week, you put the daily entries, the weekly uh, entries, into the monthly entries. And then you add them all up for the month of January. And then, then you go to the year sheet. And for each month, you put the entries in the column for the month. Now, for instance, here's the month of January. $210 for something, office rent, uh, $676 for technical equipment. Telephone, 49.42. That's something. It used to be $300 a month. Print was $100 a month. Office supplies. Twenty-five seventeen. Uh postage $305 in January uh, office equipment zero so you do that for all of the columns and the year sheet is seven pages eight pages and that's for each month of the year And at the end of the year, you add up all the totals. What's this one for? Totals out. Total out. Personal. All right, just a good example. Here it is. 5152.79. Five, now, do you think that's the end? No, it isn't. After you add up all the totals for the year, you put them on the lifetime sheet. What are the totals from the year 1937 to the year 19 or 2005? What are those totals? Franklin started to work in 1937. I worked too. Uh, before we were married, and in 1954 we were married. And these are the totals from 1937 to 2005. Telephone. Here's the total for telephone. In our lifetime, Franklin has and Glendora has spent $99,272 on telephone. Now how much do you think you've spent? And on printing we have spent $37,636. What's this total here? 29,500. Let's go up through the years and find out what that was for. Every one of those columns. 
Is that the end? After you do that, you add up all those for 1937 to, 19, to 2005? Nope. We have another step. The next, folks, is the lifetime. Highest to lowest. What's the most money that we ever spent? There it is. Guess what that's for? What do you think that's for? $547,767. What is it for? Airtime. Lundor TV ads. Bought. $547,767 worth of airtime from NBC, ABC, CBS, Channel 5, Channel uh, 7, Channel 9, Channel 11. And then what's the next highest output? Rent total. $287,266. That's from 1937 through uh, 2005. How much do you think that you have spent? on shelter, either rent or buy. And the next highest total is rent personal, $193,549. And one time only, that would be an expense that you have just once, uh, $158,210. Total deductions by the uh, feds who work for the international bankers, $101,752. How about yourself? What are your total deductions? And federal withholding, uh, $98,849. See, this is from highest to lowest, and we're dealing just with the out, not the in. And state total deductions is a hundred and one thousand seven hundred fifty two dollars and federal withholding ninety eight thousand eight hundred and forty nine dollars and I think we've got a mistake here telephone comes before federal withholding going from highest to lowest Glendora anyway telephoning we just reviewed ninety nine thousand dollars office rent $96,000. Groceries. How much do you think that these two people spent from 1937 to 2005 in groceries? Go ahead. Take a guess. I'm going to guess about $95,000. Off. $91,000. How much do you think you spent in groceries? Have we done the first 10? Okay car repair. How much you think you've spent all the time your life in car repair? Since 1937 when Franklin didn't have a car and I didn't have a car. Anyway, to 2005 we spent $82,000 in car repair. The most recent example of that was yesterday we spent $55 on a new Michelin tire for the uh, 1980 Lincoln. Is that interesting? If it is, I'll tell you some more someday. Good evening, everybody. Legal paper number three out of 12 this week. Oh, that's too many. Right. Dorothy Press, the clerk, Supreme Court, County of Columbia, State of New York. Courtesy copy to Justice Christian F. Hummel, a Christian justice of the Supreme Court, County of Columbia, State of New York. Defendant Diane Bennett, Cablevision, Media Crossways, Woodbury, New York, for taking a chat with Glendora from 10.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and cutting her audience by 4.5. And her a better defendant, Alisa Amato, Cablevision, on Media Crossways, Woodbury, New York. And FYI, champion Kelly Burness, 
Bernice versus Cablevision, Bernice versus the Public Service Commission. Return address, a chat with Glendora on 52 TV stations in 520 municipalities, including Washington, D.C. and Albany, New York. Lead people to be perfect. Stop the cruelty to animals. Stop injustice in the courts and sue judges. Okay, Office of Supreme and County Court Clerk. So, they're too skimpy on their toner. State of New York, County of Columbia, Columbia County Courthouse, Hudson, New York, Phone and Fax, Dorothy Prest, Chief Clerk, February 1, the day before Groundhog Day, to Glendora Pro Se. And counselors, there aren't any. The following case has been set for a conference with Honorable Christian F. Hummel at the Columbia County Courthouse in Hudson, New York. On March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day, at 2.15 p.m., to Glendora. RJI number, this costs $95, you know, this RJI. You know what that is? Request for Judicial Intervention. 10-05-0. Uh, Six oh five, is it? You need more toner, Dorothy Prest. Plaintiff and attorney is requested. How about our requested to forward a copy of this notice to any attorney or pro se party? For what? Not listed. This is sloppy work. You know, you pay, uh, you pay uh, $215 to get an index number. By the way, did I read you the index number? No, I don't see it anywhere. That's pretty sloppy, too. They pay $215 for an index number and they don't use it. A point of Germans will only be granted by permission of the court. Well, naturally, Dorothy Press, Chief Judge, or excuse me, Chief Clerk. Okay. I'll show you the envelope that came in. So how you doing, folks? Here's the envelope. Now, here's the RJI. I don't think you'd be particularly enlightened by seeing this. But the case is Glendora versus Diane Bennett and Alyssa Amato. They are Cablevision employees who made the mistake of dropping a chat with Pandora from 10.30 uh, uh, p.m. Friday, where it has always been since 1993. And, of course, their violation is first come, first serve. And editorial control, forbidden cable operator editorial control, and, of course, uh, New York State Public Service Law Article uh, 11, 229C, no cable operator shall limit or prohibit public access. Well, they did. And I enclose, just for their information, this cute little thing from the White Plains 
City Court. Lindura versus Sadley Stevens, Burke and Burke, and Walter A. Sarok and Cecilia Masterilli. And this is a decision on a motion, and it's by Brian Hansberry. And this is the one we went down to White Plains for on January 4th, you remember. The following papers submitted 1 to 12, read on the motion by defendant to dismiss. And notice of motion is what the judge read, and the affidavit of Walter Sarak, which wasn't signed, it wasn't really an affidavit, it wasn't notarized. Exhibits A through B, correspondence from Glendora. That should have been a cross motion by Glendora to deny the motion to dismiss and to impose sanctions. A reply affidavit of Walter A. Sarok, exhibits A through C, and file papers, all papers on the file. Upon the foregoing papers, this is Judge Hansberry speaking, White Plains City Court. The court finds and decides as follows that the motion personal to CPLR, Civil Practice Laws and Rules, 321-1A, is denied. Uh, you lost again, Sarak. You lost again, Cecilia. You lost again, Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke. This is about the ninth time you've fallen flat on your face. Uh, according, assuming that petitioner, that would be Sarak, did undertake service upon defendants as a New York County address. This fact standing alone does not amount to a violation of Uniform City Court Act 1803A. It almost looks like Uniform Commercial Code. The feds have Uniform City Court Act Section 1803. Okay, let's go on to the second page. This is Judge Hansberry, White Plains City Court, Case of Glendora versus Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke, Walter Sarak, and uh, Cecilia Masterilli. Specifically, the court file indicates that separate process was mailed by the clerk to the defendants at an address within Westchester County. Accordingly, Petitioner's Act of Glendora, that he's talking about Glendora, of independently serving the small claims notice does not violate proper service by the clerk pursuant to Uniform City Court Act, Section 1803A, and Title 22 New York Code Rules and Regulations, Section 210.41D. Motion pursuant to CPLR section 3211A7 is denied. You lose, Sadly. You lose, Sarak. You lose, Cecilia. A motion to dismiss for failure to state a cause of action should rarely, if ever, be entertained in the small claims court. Ooh, C. Friedman versus Seward Park Housing Corporation, 167 Miscellaneous 2nd, 57, Appellate Term, 1st Department, 1995. Read that again. A motion to dismiss for failure to state a cause of, claim of action should rarely, if ever, be entertained in the small claims court. This decision constitutes the order of the court. White Plains, New York, on January 31st, 2006. He was longer doing it this time, although it was Judge Press who made the other two victories for us. Uh, this was heard uh, January 4th, fully submitted January 4th. No, it really wasn't, because Sarak asked to oppose Glendora's cross motion 
to deny his motion to dismiss, and he was supposed to have it in by 11th, and Glendora was supposed to have the sir reply in by the 18th. So that is pretty fast. And here's Brian Hansberry's signature, city court judge. And it was served on Glendora Plaintiff, on a Saddle Stevens Burke and Burke defendant, and care of Cecilia Master Really, 1053 Park Street, Peekskill, and on Saddle Stevens Burke and Burke defendant, 230 Park Avenue, New York, New York. So there's another victory for the little guys over the great big Park Avenue lawyers and over the cheaters on public access. When will Cablevision ever learn? First of all, how even do public access? You know, if they could only do it and do it right, they can't even do it right. But then if they'd only learn public access rights and stop breaking the law at will and ad infinitum. Big victory for the little guys. Big victory for Glendora. Uh, the reason we attach this White Plains order to the Bennett Papers is that uh, Cecilia is the Westchester Duchess analog for uh, public access to Bennett and Amato. And that's to show Bennett and Amato that their counterpart in Westchester County missed and got caught. Now we'll have to call Mr. Friedman, the Small Plains, the White Plains Small Claims Court, tomorrow or Monday, and we'll have to ask him when are we going to get the judgment against Satellite, Satellite Stevens, Burke and Burke. When are we going to get the judgment for five thousand dollars, and then the transcript, and give him thirty days to pay. The kindergarten teacher was walking around the classroom and looking at the drawings that the children were making. And she said to one little girl, what are you drawing? And the little girl says, I am drawing God. And the teacher says, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl, without taking her eyes off of her paper, without lifting her pencil off of her paper, said, they will in a minute. You know, folks, I have a collection of 249 favorite words, and this is number 128, and this is certainly one of my favorites. I use it to describe God. Having qualities to excite wonder, united with approbation, and deserving the highest esteem. Isn't that nice? Let's try to find the uh, I'm trying to find the Latin derivative, the Latin word for it. Mirari. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that describe God? Having qualities to excite wonder, united with approbation deserving the highest esteem. That's your creator. My brother Gordon Howard Folsom has and uh, married to Virginia. Uh, they have two sons. One son Stephen you met and uh, his wife Terry. Back in November, they came to visit Aunt Glennie. And now Scott has, his son Scott has a house in Vassalboro, Maine. And this is the Stephen Grant house. And it was very personalized as to the architecture and had many uh, attractive touches made by William F. Grant. 
and uh, steep dormers, and a hanging roof, overhanging roof, and molded window. And Scott has taken very good house care of the house, and he hasn't done anything to change its past. He's just maintained it and kept it nice. And now this house of Scott Folsom was nominated as a historic site for the state of Maine. And they all went over to the state house, Gordon and Virginia and Scott and Scott's wife and Stephen and Stephen's wife and others. And they won. So Scott's house won a place as one of the uh, historic houses of the state of Maine and now they sent it to Washington DC to be one of the national historic houses. It's interesting isn't it? And Scott's mother and Gordon's wife Virginia, uh, Virginia's mother's the house of her mother and father uh, in Middletown, Rhode Island has been on the national uh, historic list for many years. And one day Virginia's mother asked Gordon to loosen the dirt around uh, beneath the window and Gordon found something round and with dirt all over it and it was a ring. And, uh, and the ring had a date on it, 1726. The house of Ginny's mother and father apparently went back to 1720. So they found this ring with this date on it, and they value it. And uh, that's interesting, too. So they have two houses in their family that one is a candidate for the National Historic Site and uh, the other one is in Rhode Island. My brother Gordon writes very good letters. He's the one who was in the Marines that we told you about one day. You folks in Manhattan, call your council member at 212-788-7100 and tell them that you want uh, low income housing or low rentals. And uh, this is from tenants and neighbors. They want affordable housing. Let me just tell you what they're saying. Rent control and rent stabilization will end unless the New York City Council votes to renew them before March the 31st. We can't take a chance on being the only, on losing the only protection that we have left against skyrocketing rents without rent regulation low and middle income people would not be able to afford to live in New York many would even be driven into the homeless shelter system this is the number to call tell the council members New York City council members that you want renewing rent regulation to be number one on their legislative agenda. What is this? We expect the landlords to try to lower the ceiling for vacancy. 
USB control from 2000 a month to 1500 a month. There's the number again. And if you don't name know the number of your council member, you can call the League of Women Voters at 212-725-3541. Praise my Ebenezer, hither by the